Good luck. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, mm -hmm. 3, 2, 1. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now. to CVS like that or something. <laughs> so did you uh, did you happen to see my, my viral video? It was like six million of me dancing. Somebody took it and they just put it out there. And it was like the Tiger King lady. Did you see it? No, not at all. Yeah, it went, it went like six million. I'm walking around my house. I'm all puffed up. I'm like, I'm a star. I'm a star. But I can't even go out of my house. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm a star. I'm a star. Meanwhile, I'm picking up my dog shit in the backyard. <laughs> That's where you're really a star. That's where I'm a star. I'm a star because I know how to pick up dog shit because I choose the difference between flicking it in or scooping it in. I'm telling you, you got to know dog shit is important. So I just want to tell everybody I have pants on. So do I. You did see that, right? CNN, that reporter. He didn't have any pants on. He actually did. He actually went on the air and the camera pulled back and you saw him hanging there with like shorties. He wasn't wearing the baggy ones. He was wearing the shorties and everybody in America saw it and everybody. And the other thing is some people are shooting it, CNN reporters and going into the bathroom thinking that it's not on, but it's on, right? Anyway, so be I am a, I'm one of those people who uh, loves salsa music. So I do Zumba every day. You guys do Zumba? You know about Zumba? I know about Zoom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do Zumba on Zoom. And you know what Zumba means in, in Spanish, right? Sweaty cougars. <laughs> <laughs> one time, one time we, was in Zumba, we were in Zumba class and uh, we had a male sub teacher and the women once they were finished with them after that hour there was just bones left that's it we ate them alive all right so i'm ready to introduce your first comic you ready okay yes you are gonna love this guy not only is he a great comic he's also a boxer and owns a boxing club in thomaston connecticut put your hands together for the one and only kareem blue everybody 
What up, what up, what up, y'all? Oh, shit, I just came from the bedroom, live from the living room. How everybody doing? <laughs> everybody doing good? I can see some of the fans out there. I can see some of them, some of y'all, uh, you can turn your cameras off if you don't want to be seen. I like your energy over here, brother, right here. I like this guy's energy over here. Okay, I'm, I'm, hold up. Oh, wait, that's a woman. My fault, miss. I think everybody need a haircut. Everybody need a haircut in the quarantine. These barbershops need to hurry up and open back up, man. But like they said, my name is Kareem Blue. I'm from New York City. Any New Yorkers in the building, clap your screen right now if you're in the building. You know what I mean? But right now, I live in Bethlehem, Connecticut. Bethlehem, Connecticut. I'm the only brother in Bethlehem, Connecticut. Yes, it's as white as it sounds. So by default, I'm the leader of the black community here in Bethlehem, Connecticut. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to run for office and you're trying to get the vote, the black vote, you got to see me, baby. You got to see me. You know, this is crazy, this whole quarantine thing, man. You know, like now I'm, 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 a, I'm a teacher, I'm a gym teacher, science teacher. You know what I mean? This ain't going too well, man. I got a 12-year-old daughter, six-year-old son. My mom called me to talk about, hey, baby, how, how's the how's the homeschooling going? I said, mine ain't going too great. They're already suspended and shit. They're already suspended. They build the tents outside, mom. They can't come in the house. They suspended. You know the rules. They can't come back to school for a week. It's crazy, man. It's crazy out here, man, like doing these, you know, online shows, you know. Some of the crowds is cool. Some of y'all. But you know what I'm saying? But like, like, like it's crazy. You got to be home and then you ain't got no haircut. Wife treating you different. You know what I'm saying? You got to do extra chores. You got to do extra dishes. You know what I mean? It's crazy, fellas. We need to protest this, fellas. We need to protest this. When the barbershops open back up, don't talk to them. When the barbershops open back up, we're going to go to the bar all week with fresh haircuts. That's how we going to do it. That's how we going to do it here in Bethlehem. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm doing I'm doing I in the homeschooling thing, though. My son come up to me the other day. You know what I mean? He's six years old. He said, Dad, man, we got to talk about these grades. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gave me an F on this paper right here. I'm like, listen, bro, you got to step your game up. And right now, it's 8 o'clock. My office is past the office hours right now. You got to see me tomorrow, baby. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Just because you my son, you don't get no special treat. You know what I mean? I don't play those games like that. You know what I mean? I've been married for like 12 years now. 12 years or 13. My bad. I'm glad my wife ain't here. She probably would do some shit at the screen right now. You know what I'm saying? Been married for 13 years. You know what I'm saying? My wife is a big girl. If you confuse what big girl mean, that means over 180, over 180 pounds. So if you know what I'm talking about, you probably got like about three, three snacks on your couch right now. You know what I'm saying? Over 180. You know what I'm saying? Love me some big girls. That was one of the requirements of being my wife. You had to be able to cook. And you had to be able to lift me out of fire. That's real talk. For real, fellas, you got to be, you know what I mean? These are the type of questions we need to be asking now in the dating scene. You know what I'm saying? Can she lift you up? Are them calf muscles all right? You know what I'm saying? These are the type of things you need to worry about. You know what I mean? As the leader of the black community here in Bethlehem, the only brother out here, I get asked a lot of weird questions. People be like, hey, Kareem, who you voting for in the election? And I'd be like, well, Todd, I don't know who I'm voting for. I ain't watched the whole season of American Idol, so I don't know who the hell I'm going to vote for with your nosy ass. You know what I'm saying? All type of weird-ass questions. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm from New York City originally, so, like, living in the suburbs is different. You know what I mean? Like, like for example, like, you know, you might say the same words, but it means something different. Like, for example, right? so, like, let's say if you're walking down the street here in the suburbs in Bethlehem, people are like, hey, man, those are some nice shoes you got on. That's a compliment in the suburbs. If you in the hood and they say, hey, bro, those are some nice shoes you got on. You got about five seconds to take them shits off, okay? Don't be a hero. Don't try to be a hero, sir. I'm talking to some of you. You know who I'm talking to, trying to be a hero. You know what I mean? Some of my white friends, they love trying to be a hero. They love adventure. So I know as soon as it open up, outside open up again, they're going to be doing all of these tough mother races and all these Spartan races. They be trying to get me to go to these races. I be like, man, I ain't doing these races, man. They be like, Kareem, it's fun. You're going to jump off a cliff. You know, you're going to jump into this pool. It's like muddy water. It's ice cold. You can't see. 
You know what I mean? Didn't electrocute you at the end of the race. I'm like, that don't sound fun at all. And then 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 it costs like $250. I'm like, no, you got the wrong brother. I, I, I ain't doing that. I was like, I got a better idea. How about we drive down to the hood? I don't care where is that, Bridgeport, Brooklyn. We're going to drive down to the hood, right? Then I'm going to take $100 to your back. And then I'm going to let you out the car. And if you could make it back to the car, then you didn't want the whole race. You get what I'm saying? You know, it's crazy, crazy talk. They, they be trying to get me to do all this type of weird stuff. I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. Not doing it, Todd. Not doing it. You know what I mean? But it's crazy out here to trying to raise kids in Bethlehem, Connecticut, being the only brother. Because, like, you know, like my, my, my kids, they come up to me with all type of questions. You know, I mean? my daughter come up to me. She said, Dad, I got a question for you. She said, Christmas, right? Is that about Jesus? And I was like, well, yeah. You know what I mean? As far as I know, yes. Unless something changed, unless they got some new findings, yes. And she said, well, Dad, are, are, are Jesus and Santa brothers? And I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't have no answer for that. I ain't been to church in a minute. I ain't going front. I ain't been there in a minute. I said, maybe you should ask Grandma. You should probably ask Grandma. She's a little older than me. She might have some facts. So she go ask Grandma over the weekend. She come back home. She said, Dad. Jesus and Santa are brothers. And I was like, what you mean? She said, well, when they got Jesus, Santa got scared and he moved down to the North Pole under witness protection. I said, what? She said, yeah. She said, did you know that his real name was Chris Kringle? So I said, you know what? You ain't watching CSI with grandma no more. We, we ain't doing that no more. You're going to stay over here for the weekends from now on. Crazy, man. Little kids is crazy, man. My son, my son, he's crazy. Six years old, like I said, man. He think he the incredible hope. Like, he think he Dr. David Bruce Bam. Like, you know, like the other day, right? I said, yo, man, we can't go out in the yard. It's raining, you know what I'm saying? So he started turning into the hope. I'm like, hey, hey, calm down, big guy. Sun's getting low. Drink a juice box. Chill out, brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, chill out. So he get all upset. But he do this whole new thing now, right? He busting in my room all times of night. He be busting in the room. Boom. Hulk. Smash. Hulk. Smash. And I'm like, man, get out the room. Dad is trying to smash, man. I ain't raising no hater. You get what you feel me? I ain't trying to raise no haters out here. It's a quarantine. You can't be in the house with no haters. It's crazy, man. These kids don't get it, man. These kids don't get it. You know what I mean? My kids are getting so bored, they starting to miss school. You know what I'm saying? They got you. I hope they open back up. You know what I mean? Them free lunches helped out. You know what I'm saying? You got to come out of pocket now for the lunches. You know what I mean? They eating a lot. I'm like, you got to monitor everything now. You got to monitor the snacks. Like, hey, man, hey, hey, man, that's the third snack. You know what I'm saying? Today. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, calm that down. You know what I'm saying? We we on a, we on a one snack a week limit. You know, we don't know how long this thing going to last. You know what I mean? Some of y'all looking like Will the Beast right now. But you know, this is where the real love is tested. You see, my man got the bag over his head. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what that's what happens. You know what I mean? The drummer got the bag over his head because you know what I'm saying? You know, he ain't got no shade. He ain't got no shade in the house. You know what I'm saying? But that, that's how it goes down, brothers. We, we got we got we gotta show that love to the ladies. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. See, I'm not Peach just said, you know, I'm also a boxing trainer, I'm a personal trainer. So I like to give people tips, okay? You at home right now, fellas. You know what I'm saying? With your ladies, I hope you know, that you I hope that you're getting some. You know what I'm saying? I hope that you're getting some. Unless if you're a certain age, you know what I'm saying? You you over you over forty. You listen, fellas. Remember when you was younger and you you could you could hit that thing without without breathing? Can't do that no more. Can't do that no more, bro. No, you can't hold your breath. Remember we hold the breath. Can't do that no more. Your heart gonna mess your heart up. Can't do that no more, brother. You gotta, you gotta breathe. You gotta breathe. But let me show you how we do this right now. So let me show you right here. All right, see, see. Make sure, make sure you record this part right here or write it down. See, because it gets confusing. All right. So when you're going in, fellas, when you're going in, all right, all right, on the way in, you gotta breathe out on the way in. You understand what I'm saying? Pay attention now. Out on the way in. You feel what I'm saying? Out on the way in. But see, this is where it gets confusing. You know, you got to breathe in on the way out. 
You get what I'm saying? So you don't mess your heart up. You don't mess your heart up, fellas. You get what I'm saying? But listen, fellas, if you're looking at the screen right now, I'm not looking at you. I'm not making eye contact with you on that move. I just want to make sure that we clear on that. We're not making eye contact. I'm just looking at the screen. But that's a good move for you to put into the repertoire. You know what I mean? That's a good move for you right there. You need to use that. This is the time, ladies, to sit down with your man, you know, and watch some porn. Because you can learn some new moves. You know what I'm saying? You can learn some new moves, you know what I'm saying, watching the porn and quarantine. You know what I mean? It's a lot of little tricks you can learn in there. You know what I mean? So, like, you got to watch the porn like you a basketball coach watching game of the other team. You got to sit there like you a coach is dissecting the game. Like you see right there. Look, you see what she's doing right there? That We need some of that in the next game. Yeah, you see the ball movement right there? That's what we need right there. We need some of that in the next game. You know what I mean? What we going to do right now, we going to run a scrimmage. Yeah, we going to hit the showers. Bang, hit her on the ass, ass slap. You get me what I'm saying? Fellas, we got to watch it. We got to break it down. Ladies, you got to watch it with your man. You know what I mean? That you got to watch it with your man. You know what I mean? It just it just helps build the relationship. You know what I mean? Trust me. Trust me. I've been married for 13 years. Trust me. Trust me. Help build a relationship. Does she watch porn with me? No, not all the time. But listen, it, it helps. It helps build a relationship. You know what I mean? Don't get nosy. Don't get nosy. You know, it's crazy, man. This is my first show in front of a no crowd. No, I'm lying. It's, no, I'm lying. I did some shows at a couple bars where it seemed like it wasn't no real crowd in there. Comedians know what I'm talking about. You had like a bar and shit and they ain't paying attention. That's like when you first starting out with shit. Now you're in the living room. The, the whole quarantine and changed the game. Shit didn't change the game. I ain't got to leave the house. I ain't know what the fuck to wear tonight. I got on the chain. I got a tank top on. I got slippers on my feet. I ain't know what the hell to wear. I was like, shit, they want me to do a show in the house. You know what I'm saying? I was like, shit, okay, shit, let me set it up. Yo, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to wear. You wear your robe, pajamas. You don't know what the hell to wear. Tay almost came out here with some boxers. I don't know, shit. Y'all can't fucking respond anyway, shit. I'm like, hey, I don't know. You, you don't know what to do on this, motherfuckers. I'm hoping they laughing out there at home. You know what I'm saying? Text message me if you laughing after this, though. Don't text me right now because you're going to fuck up my feet. Don't mess up my feet. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy out there. I hope the little kids watching this. It's set with short crowds only. So to so take your little ass to bed. I know it's like a weird time and people don't have no track of bedtime. But if you're watching this and your parents don't know, take your little ass to bed. You know what I mean? <laughs> take your little ass to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Go go watch some Power Rangers or something. This ain't for you. <laughs> this is for grown folk only. Grown folk only. You know what I mean? It's crazy, man. Being the being the only brother in Bethlehem, Connecticut, like I said before, man, it's crazy because I try to show my kids other black entertainers. So I showed them like Michael Jackson, right? Michael Jackson invented the moonwalk. So I sit my kids down, I show them the moonwalk. Then I put on the TV, Michael come on. Michael hit the moonwalk on him. My daughter was like, dad, that was cool. But that ain't no moonwalk. I said, wait, you got a better moonwalk than that? She said, yeah, dad, I got a better moonwalk than that. So I was like, let me see. So she get there. She gonna do the Neil Armstrong moonwalk. I said, go to bed, go to sleep. Don't disrespect Michael in my house. No disrespecting Michael in the crib. Ridiculous. Crazy. You know what I mean? Raising these damn kids, man. These kids is crazy, man. If you if you homeschooling them right now, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Even if you ain't doing a good job, you're doing the best you got damn can. Because these kids is crazy, man. You know what I mean? They they don't they don't want to do they want to play video games all goddamn day. You know what I mean? They want to pay blade blades, whatever the hell them shits is called. My son got me paying these goddamn. If listen, if you got like a six or seven year old, you know, little metal ass shits, the little Beyblade blade shits. My son got me playing them goddamn things. I didn't fuck around and and then bay blade and rip the shit and then thing popped me up and hit me in the goddamn eye. Goddamn metal piece. That you gotta have safety goggles on to play these goddamn games these kids is playing. Shit is real metal. It be in the goddamn high. I'm like, this goddamn crazy, man. They don't pay teachers enough for shit like this. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping that extra money that Donald Trump's sending is for my teacher's salary. That's what they said. 
That twelve hundred for your teaching salary. That's what that is. They said twelve hundred for your teaching salary. How y'all doing with the mask on out there though? Y'all can breathe out there with the mask on. I hope y'all can breathe. Cause it's crazy, man. I, I can't really do the mask thing, man. I'm a brother out here. I'm the only brother out here. They know it's me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? You can't get away. It's me. They be like, Kareem, is that you? I be like, nah, this ain't me. They can't tell. I'm got the mask on. I think women invented the mask. I don't think it really, really do nothing, really. I think that women said, let's wear the mask because their mustache is growing in. That's all it's really about. Women, let's keep it real. It was some women senator that said, we got to wear the mask. If y'all closing the beauty salon, we got to wear it. And the barbershop, we, we, I ain't wearing no goatee. Goddamn. We going to put a mask on. Women was like, we wearing a mask. It's fashionable now. The Muslim women been trying to tell y'all Americans to wear the mask. Y'all wasn't listening. They told you. They told you. Wear the mask. Y'all wasn't listening. You know what I'm saying? Now everybody got to wear the mask now. It's crazy now. Now you got to judge people by their eyebrows and all that. You know what I mean, fellas? We got to look at eyebrows and, you know what I'm saying? Fake lashes now. The lashes going to be crazy. The lash game going to be ridiculous now. You know what I mean? The eyebrow game was already crazy. I don't know if y'all seen the fur eyebrows. They had fur eyebrows. I, last winter, I did a show. I went outside, and a lady was smoking outside, and she had fur eyebrows. Did yeah, fur sewn into the eyebrow. And then she was smoking, talking about it's cold out here. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm like, I'm like, close your eyes, lady. Kareem, that was badass. Woo! Like, like, dude, you've been saving your material to do all at once, dude. <laughs> that was amazing. And first off, you look great. You look fantastic on camera. Um, I'm going to do something that a lot of comedy shows don't do right now. I am going to do shout outs to some of the people that we got on. We got Ricky Flores, Viviana Martinez, Wendy Wilde, Carrie May. Who else we got? Joseph Gonzalez. How you doing? Yeah. Say hello, everybody. Say hello. I'm going to give some shout outs. Uh, uh, Adam, Adam Snare. How you doing, bro? Frank McCree. Yeah, I love him. McCree. Uh, I'm gonna keep going. Cassandra, Cassandra, Carlo Lucien, Carlo Lucien, Diamond Dedge. Dude, we, we're up to 52 people. I love it. You guys okay, keep those comments okay. coming. I can see you over there. I can see your comments. Um, say hello, shout outs to everybody. Right now, I'm gonna keep this show rolling. I love this lady. She's gorgeous. Take a look at her. She's ready to go. The magical enchantress. Erica Sodas, everybody that Yeah. Go so, oh, Erica. Thank you, amazing hostess. She's awesome. All my new friends, all my New Yorkers, my fellow New Yorkers. My name is Erica Sodas, and I am just honored to be here tonight with all of you. And I, as a female magician, I want to ask you, and so far we're all unmuted, and that's great. If you could name two male magicians, just say yes. Or no? C can you? Can everyone hear? Of course. Yes. Who can name two female magicians? I can't. One female magician besides yeah. me. No, right? And you could probably name five or ten male magicians. Absolutely. Now, right? Exactly. Definitely. And while we're not in the limelight, and you know, understandably so because of our society, it doesn't mean we haven't been here since hundreds of years performing magic and contributing to this art form that I love. And I was so excited to be asked to be part of this show that I took this poster board that I had and I put on here a bunch of women magicians from my collection. We have Mercedes Toma, who was known for her really small hands and she could do billiard balls and coin manipulations. She was super famous. She is a total badass. She's my favorite, Madame Josephine Ghirardelli. She was known as the fireproof female from Germany. She would pour hot lead down her mouth and all over her body. She was amazing. And Irons, the famous Fox sister, spiritualist, and on and on. Oh, Annie Abbott, 1800s, 1900s. She was known for her super strength. There's hundreds and hundreds of us. And of course, one of the greatest magicians of all time, Adelaide Hermann. Most people have heard of her husband. Well, no, 
magic is the only art form where you can be famous and nobody knows you except magicians. <laughs> so basically, Adelaide Herman was really famous back in the vaudevillian days and after. And so here we are today. And you see, we are bringing back the power of female magic, sorcery. We have contributed through large stage illusions, mentalism, spiritualism, and all kinds of magic. Woo. Thank you. Now, oops. Now speaking. Uh -oh. So speaking of Adelaide Herman, I want to talk about her now. One of the most famous magicians of all time and bring back her memory and tell her story. Now, she was born in 1853 in England. She actually traveled to America at the age of 16 and she performed dance. And later in her life, she went back to New York in her early 20s, she was on her way to marry an American actor, but instead fell in love with Alexander Herman and married him instead. Pretty soon she became his assistant. And she was more than an assistant, like all, all assistants. She was a dancer. She would carry dancers on her back. She was shot through a cannon. She was amazing and they had a fantastic career until 1896 when her husband suddenly and unexpectedly died and not only was she broken hearted she was absolutely broke because you see they lived very very extravagant lives they had their own yacht their own private train car and she didn't know what she was going to do. So she called Alexander Herman's nephew to come and take Alexander's place. But you see, he wasn't a very good magician and they parted ways. They also did not see eye to eye. And what was she going to do being broke and broken? So she then did what a lot of strong women would do and decided I have to take matters into my own hands. And she took all these broken pieces of her life. And she thought, well, I have to now be the greatest magician. I'm going to do the deadly bullet catch. On her first show, she stood on stage and hired six militiamen to fire at her. And when all was over, she was still standing with the six bullets in her hand. And so began Adelaide Herman's fantastic and long career. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Adelaide Herman, Adelaide Herman, you see, had to deal with so much difficulty. I, and she even, she even uh, 30 years into her career after her husband died, there was a fire that burned down everything. She lost all of her costumes, all of her illusions. She's already in her 70s. Hundreds of animals died. It was completely tragic. Even then, in her 70s, she was amazing. She, she started again with a pared down show called Magic, Grace, and Music. And she's buried right here or there in Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx. You can go and visit her next to two other Hermans. And you see Adelaide Herman, even when she was born, was challenging the Victorian expectations of women. She knew that perception and what we're told in the narrative isn't always correct. And I'd like to demonstrate this now. I wanna show you that sometimes what we think is reality can be illusion. And sometimes what we think is definitely illusion can be reality. Now, 
we are going to explore this concept with two cards. I have a red backed ace of eight of diamonds, you can see, and I have, no, that's blue backed, and I have a red backed queen of clubs, these two cards. Now, this card is going to represent reality. Now, I love language and the etymology of reality is taken from Latin and it means true, existing. And the definition of perception, it also from Latin means receiving. So in other words, reality is truth and perception is our experience of the truth. And while we may think that what we are experiencing is true and real, often it is rare to actually experience reality and perceive it as it actually is. And I am going to demonstrate this now. Here is reality, as I said, and here we come with our perceptions and all our beliefs, our stories, and we see an experience and believe that how we are sensing it is real. But if we learned to look at situations from all angles, we would begin to realize that often what we think is reality actually is illusion. And just because someone tells us something is real and true doesn't actually make it so. <laughs> no, we can then start maybe critically thinking and look at situations from all angles and realize that maybe there's some kind of cognitive dissonance going on. And then we can break out of our illusion here, break out of our illusion and wake up to the magic that's all around us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Adelaide Herman, thank you, thank you, Adelaide Herman, and her husband Alexander did what many, many, many magicians at the time were doing, including Harry Houdini. They debunked the spiritualists. Now, I'm not approving and saying it's awesome to take advantage of people and make money, but I happen to love the spiritualists. What the spiritualists would do is they would contact the dead loved ones of their clients. Now, back in the day when we were performing live shows, I have a psychic show called The Magic Within, and it's really about our psychic spirit powers. And I don't necessarily seek out dead people unless, well, they come to the show. And so I thought it would be fun now to explore your psychic power. So I'm going to write down something on this piece of paper, and then I'm going to see if everyone in our room here, my uh, performer, sister and brothers, uh, can do this. And also, if you're watching, I invite you now, because I am going to send this through the waves. First, I'm going to give you some hints. So let me just write something down first. Ba -da 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 -da. Okay, cool. I wrote down a number. Now, for some of you, this might actually be the first time you've explored your psychic powers. You're not here in Colorado, a lot of people, but you're in New York, maybe you're into that. And so I wrote down a number. It's a two digit number. It's between one and 50. It's an odd number. Actually, both the numbers are odd, but they're not the same number. Okay, ready? I'm sending it to you now. Pick it up, ready? Everybody got their little hints up, up. I can see you, I can see you, you're getting it. It just went into your head. You got it. Oh, look at that. I could. Oh, and I could feel that person. Oh, I could feel that person watching, watching it on Facebook. Oh, yeah, you, you, you. Now trust yourself. You, I'm talking to you. Trust yourself. Now's the time. We need us all to wake up. Okay, let's see. Now, what I'd love to do, so if you're unmuted and you're in here or you're muted, type in in the Facebook. I actually can't even see it right now. I'm not um, seeing it, but if you're if you're doing Facebook, write down some comments. And what do you think the number is? And can we just for a second unmute some of the people here? What number did you pick up for, for the people in the Zoom entertainment, the Frost Vaudeville? Wait, dude. I got 35. 39. We say 39. 37. 37. 35, 39. What else? 22. <laughs> yeah? OK. Who said 37? 37. Everybody said 37. Even all the people on the 
chat, they all said 37. Mm -hmm. Except so, everyone said 37 except for the people in this room. Well, that means the people in this room aren't super smart, but the people <laughs> watching the show are really have amazing psychic. Oh, can you see it's a super glare? 37. It's 37. <laughs> Hey, that's cool. all the people in the chat to 37. Wow, we had a lot of good psychics. So awesome. Okay, so it has been such a pleasure to perform for you and be part of the Bronx Vaudeville Bochinchando. But before we go, I just want to share one last effect, if I can. One okay. last effect to honor Miss Adelaide Herman. You see, Adelaide Herman was known as the queen of magic in her day and even today. And as a female magician, I'm always thinking, what the freak? Even in a deck of cards, there is eight males and four females. It's very annoying. But anyway, queens are my favorite card. Now, Peach is just shaking her head. So Peaches, we're gonna play this with you. And um, so if you can just unmute Peaches, I think um, they can do that. So Peaches, will you okay. play this game with me? Yes, I'm in there. Peaches, so Peaches and I, we haven't arranged this, correct? Not at all. I have no idea. I, I yeah. don't know anything about it. So. I just met you on the first initial call last week. Yeah, exactly. So we're actually not even, we're hopefully we will be friends, but we're new yeah. friends. Yeah. So Peaches, I want you to imagine now that you're putting out your left hand like this, because I know you can not see. Not imagine it. or I can? Actually do it. Yes, do it, sorry. <laughs> See, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do on. it. I know the audience probably can't see you, but they can hear you. So thank you for talking. Now imagine that I can place these four cards on top of your hand. Not a, yeah, now that you have to imagine. Okay. Oh, you got it? I can see it. Wow, you have a okay. good imagination. Okay. Now imagine that I'm putting, now put your, now really put your right hand on top. Okay. Now, Peaches, yeah. I want you to imagine that those four cards in your hand are four queens. Oh my God, yes. You like the queen. I love it. I love the queen. Yes. So that shouldn't be hard to do because there are four queens. Now, Peaches, I want you to imagine that I could reach in and remove two queens of the same color. In your imagination, did I remove the queen of the red queens or the black queens? Hearts. The queen of hearts. Two queens of the same color. Of the same color. Would that yeah. Work? The black Do you queen. want me to remove the, the red, red queen? Black queen. I'm, black changing queen. My, I'm changing my thing. The black queen. Black. Okay, yeah. I removed two. I removed the black queens. Cool. Right. Okay, so now imagine that I can take. No, she's. You probably all can't see her on Facebook Live, but I'm telling you, I can see her and she is concentrating. This woman has her eyes closed. She's like, oh my God. Okay, here we go. So imagine Peaches that I could take yeah. one of these black queens, turn her face up, and put her back into the pack. Did I put face up the queen of spades? or the queen of clubs? The queen of clubs. The queen of clubs. Okay, now there is one queen face up. Peaches, you can open your eyes. Okay, okay. and we're gonna see if you did it. The queen of clubs, give Peaches a huge yeah. round of applause. Can you see it? I know there's a glare. Can everyone see That's that? Perfect. The queen of clubs. Now, you see, this is no ordinary queen of clubs. Just like Adelaide Herman was no ordinary magician. This is actually from the red pack. Hey. And just in case some of you are thinking, well, Erica's a magician. She's doing some sleight of hand. Oh, no. You see, all of us are magic. And Peaches knows that because all these cards are actually blank. She thought of the only card that would make this happen. Holy Thank crap. You. Thank you so much. I'm Erica Sotis. It has been my honor and pleasure to be part of Bronx yeah. And enjoy the rest of the night. You're in for something. You picked the perfect one. That was one. great. Awesome. I need some music, man. I need some music. Let me see what you got. Unknown, Congero. Give me something. Give me something, brother. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Louder, louder, baby. Louder, louder, baby. Louder, baby. Nice and loud. Hit that. Why are you slowing down, bro? All right. You ready for your next comic? You ready for our next comic? Yes. Actually, you know what? We're going to go to a magician. Let's keep the magic happening. You ready? Okay. All ready. Right now, here we go. Yeah. I love this gentleman, one, because he used to be my DJ for all my comedy shows for Laugh and Dance at the comic strip, but he's multi-talented. Put your game. The Omar Illusion. 
Thank you, Peaches, and thank you, everybody, for coming and joining us. Here we go. Oh, that, that's in frame? Oh, uh, uh, give me a second. Let me adjust. All right, we'll, we'll try it from there. One, two, three. Thank you all. Some of you might be wondering what you just saw. If there's any little ones in the room, it's bubblegum. Don't worry, parents, it's latex, so it's safe. By the way, if your children and you are laughing at this together, cool beans. I wanted to see if I can uh, show you guys a little something about my opinion of how magic works and uh, perhaps maybe the view of what you guys may see. Because most people see magic as a puzzle, so I would like to show you guys my point of view using this right over here, that's a piece of rope. Now, most people know that a piece of rope has two ends, one middle. That middle, if I were to cut it, I would have two ropes. Two ropes would equal four ends. Now, I know we're not here to do math. We're here to enjoy a little bit of magic and uh, some comedy. So this is what I'm going to ask you, a rope and a half. I would like you to join me in your imagination and imagine what a rope and a half would look like. So one rope would have two ends, two ropes would have four ends. In your mind, can you imagine the rope and a half? That would be three ends. One, two, and three ends. On a rope that only has one middle. Now I know that might be strange because some of you were thinking, wait, a rope and a half should have four ends. It would be even weirder to have one, two, three, four ends, and only one middle. Now, maybe, it might be tough to show you with all the knots together. I'll bring two ends down over here. This way, now you can see two ends there and two ends there. So if I snap my fingers, open this up, now you can see two ropes, one and two. The idea to try to see if I can get you to see the illusion is by tying a knot and showing you a circle. But not just any circle. I want you to use your imagination and picture what it might look like to you. If I hold this like this, some might say a smile, some might say a heart, maybe a pancreas, I don't know. So this is what I wanted to see. Who remembers how many ropes I started with? I can see in the comments, you can answer, don't worry. That's exactly right, we started with one rope. Now, I don't want you to feel like it's a trick rope or anything, this is something you would find behind any bedroom post. The idea to show you that I'm not cheating is to show that most magicians do where they cut a rope and put it back together. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen that before, so I'm going to give it a try to go down the rope, cut it right about there. Oh, wait. Um, ooh, that was supposed to be even. Uh, yeah, sorry. It was supposed to look something like this. I might have cut it over here. So what I'm going to have to do is bring this all the way up to this so this way everyone over here on this side can see the big rope. You will all see the little rope and just for you, I'm going to put it back together. But the only way I can do that is by hypnotizing you. Have you ever been hypnotized before? Oh, I'm sure you have. Everybody watches Netflix nowadays, don't they? This is what I want you to watch. This little piece of rope right over here, you're going to see it getting smaller. Little by little, watch, it gets smaller. Well, that would be a camera trick. If I were to actually be able to do it, I would be able to stand still right in front of you and you can actually see the little rope shrinking itself all the way back in. So all we have left now is just a knot. If we take that knot, back to one rope. Thank you all very much. I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, I've been doing magic now for close to 40 years. I'm only 37, how good I am. Uh, well, forgive me. Uh, it's not what you think. It's, it's soda. I uh, wasn't sure if we were allowed to put place on TV, but uh, uh, I was going to try to show you guys a trick that my own to make a bottle disappear. So all we do is wave our hand at the bottle, say any magic word, abracadabra, hocus pocus, the bottle, look at that, disappears. 
I know you're not impressed. When my uncle taught me this trick, I was around five years old. I told him, I know where the bottle is. The bottle's inside the bag. He says, you're right. But as long as the cops don't see it. So the idea is to make it disappear. Abracadabra, one, two, three. All right, yeah, you guys deserve better than that. Let me try something different for you. What I will show you is, uh, I, I'm not quite sure how many of you are clapping for the magician because I can see within the comments, I have a few reactions, but nobody's writing clap, nobody's saying yay, wow. I love the hearts, I love the happy faces. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna teach you how to clap for anybody who performs on any one of these, uh, any Zoom shows, vaudeville, from this point on, all you have to do is watch for the cues. The cue that I like to use, simple bow. But in order to do that, I'm gonna teach you with a card trick. I hope you guys don't mind. I'm in a little bit of a budget, so it's a different kind of card trick. So this is what I'm gonna need from you all. I'm gonna count to six, you all can count along with me, and we're gonna start from there. One, two, three, four, five, six cards. We take half of six, which is, that's right, C. Who said C? <laughs> We'll take one, two, three of those cards and pretend they disappeared. I'll toss them off to the side and I take a bow. That's your cue to type clap. So we're going to start from the beginning. We start with one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Half of those cards, which is one, two, three, they will be tossed off to the side. Pretend they disappeared. I bow. That's when everybody. Beautiful. See. Some of you guys wrote claps. Some of you guys are typing ha, ha, ha. Well, let's do this as a group together. We'll start from the beginning with one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Half of six is? There you go. One, two, three. Now, remember, if I toss three cards off to the side, I should only be counting one, two, three cards in my hand. It's weird if I count one, two, three, four, five, six cards, throw them on the side, even though I only started with one, two, three. Did I lose anyone? Let me try it a different way. Yo tengo uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis cartas. See, just like Dora, right? Voy a coger uno, dos, tres cartas, tiro over there. <laughs> I missed that episode, how to say over there. My apologies. But if I snap my fingers, wave my hand, I can still show you uno, uh, two, three, four, five, six. I take a bow. That's when everybody... Beautiful. So I'm going to be wrapping up my time right now. I would like to show you one more thing. I've actually been a performer for quite a few years in Coney Island called Magic at Coney that usually runs every Sunday, but now we're doing them online every Saturday at 1 o'clock. Check us out if you get a chance, Omar Illusion. What we do is show a little bit of the tricks that they have taught me in Coney Island while I taught them some card tricks. The eye is you take a nail, you place it to the front of the face, and you go one, two, three weeks ago when I did this, I realized that there were some children watching. So again, if there are any kids out there, get after me. Do not try this at home. Go to your friend's house and tell them not to do it either because this is a dangerous trick. I've been doing this for quite a while. And as you can see, you'll be nice and close. This does not bend. This is not shape. It is a real nail right to the center of the face, which is not here. If you look carefully, it'll be right there. So watch. Ah. Can you see that? Let me get a little closer. Ah. Yeah, I hit the back. So that should tell me to stop. Hands empty. All we need now. A little handkerchief. Ah, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you looked away. Hold on, we'll start again. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much. My name is Omar Illusion. I hope you enjoyed my You're right. I forgot to clean it. Hold on. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's gross. What? Did you see that? All right. A lot of people 
we got a lot of people in there. Keep the chat coming. I can see all this, all the people that are there. Lynn Mole, Deborah, I see you. Uh, Wendy Arturo. Uh, who else is on there? Christina, Rosano, Viviana. You've been there a long time. Where else? David Nielsen. How you doing, David? Thank you for joining us. I like to get shout outs. Tell somebody, share somebody. We still have one comedian to go, and I'm about to introduce him. You are gonna love this guy. He uh, he has his own show called Las Live on YouTube. Funny as heck. He's one of my favorite comics. Put your hands together for Laz Vic, everybody. Put your hands together for him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, no, don't keep going. Don't keep going. That's okay. Don't, you know, that's so kind of you. So kind. You guys are amazing. You don't even know me and you just keep clapping. Hi, how are you guys in Streamland? I am coming to you from an undisclosed location. Everything is fine here. Everything is normal, as you can see. Nothing to see here. Are you guys feeling like I'm feeling? Like there's something wrong? I feel like there's something wrong. And we're stuck here in quarantine together. You and me, you and me. And I'm no longer a comedian, you guys. I can't be a comedian because I need an audience. So I have declared myself to be a streamedian. I am now a streamedian. And I think I'm the first one to ever coin that term, by the way. So I know, thank you. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. So how are you guys doing out there? I want to thank Bronx Music Heritage Center for having me tonight here, even though I'm having a few problems at home. Uh, a little bit about me in case you don't know who I am. Um, I am a single father. Uh, yes, uh, that's right. I am raising one cat. I refer to him as El Gato. That's what he re responds. He responds to El Gato. That's what he responds to. Um, they found him in the Bronx and they assure me he's fully domesticated. Uh, cats are assholes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They are. They totally are. My cat wakes me up every day five minutes before my alarm goes off, five minutes. Uh, and he'll slide stuff off the dresser to wake me up. And when I first got the cat, I thought something's wrong. The cat is so lazy, he doesn't fully meow. He's, ow, ow. For the first two weeks, I thought something was wrong with the, with the, with, with the cat. So now I had to lock the cat out. I locked him out of my house, of my room, so he can't get in. Uh, and it only took the cat uh, uh, two days to learn how to knock. So now the cat knocks. Uh, and I thought someone broke into my house because I live alone. And all I hear is. Uh, oh. This is my life, ladies and gentlemen, living in quarantine with El Gato. Thank you for the hearts. Please send me some more hearts. Oh, I can't. If you have a cat, ladies and gentlemen, it cuts your dating pool in half. In half, because half of the population is allergic to cats. He's essentially cat blocking me. I can't date anymore. I can't date, we're in quarantine. How am I gonna date, ladies and gentlemen? How am I gonna date now? I got a date with an app now. Now I got a date with an app. The problem is, ladies and gents, and I'm too old to be on these apps, but I'm too young to be dead. So there's a balance. So now I'm dating on the apps, because what, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'm single. So now I'm on the apps. And all the apps, it's the same. The apps, the, the, a lot of the pictures are the same, ladies and gents. It's a girl climbing a mountain, riding a bike, doing a marathon. I'm exhausted at this point. I'm exhausted, okay? 
I I want a girl, the pictures, I want to see her eating a pizza, watching TV, taking a nap. I don't know. That's just me, ladies and gents. How are you dating in the quarantine? People are now going on Zoom dates. How do you go on a Zoom date? How is that possible? And now people can use filters and filter themselves up to do differently. I, the other day I saw a, a, a pic of a girl and her eyes were so abnormally large. If she was real, she's an alien. Thank you. Just, I'm gonna provide my own laughter at this point. That's just easier for me to do. So how am I gonna go on a Zoom date now? So ladies, please don't put filters on your apps. Your eyes aren't that big, ladies. Your eyes aren't that big. Calm it down. Bring it back with the filters. You know, I went out with a very nice girl before all this happened. I went out with a very nice girl, a very nice millennial girl. We went out on a date together and she asked for no gluten. Now, ladies and gents, I don't know what gluten is. I'm not sure. So I asked for extra gluten on mine because I would like extra gluten and she didn't like that too much. Um, so I went out with another girl that she said, I want to date someone that I'm excited when they show up. I want to date someone that'll bring me soup when I'm sick. I want to date someone that just bring me groceries at a moment's notice. I said, you want a boyfriend? You want Amazon Prime? <laughs> Amazon Prime? So that's my situation. Today, Amazon came. I was so happy. It was like, I was so, I was ready to marry the guy. Like I was like here and I gave him extra tip on top of the tip. I was so happy. He bought me the two jars of peanut butter because now you put in an Amazon order and you put in a hundred items and you get 12. So I got peanut butter, one roll of toilet paper and some tea. So yeah. This is my situating situation, ladies and gents. And this is late for me, by the way. It's nine o'clock. I'm usually in bed now watching Friends. So this is a treat right now to be on the show. Let me play some more of my uh, background music. Do you guys like my, my background music? By the way, I didn't know Kareem lived at a comedy club. Kareem, when did you move into a comedy club? That's amazing. How did you, what's the rent? On the Broadway, what what rent do you pay? <laughs> I'll, I'll I, just, I'll, I'll, I was just curious. I was just curious about that. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to interrupt you, um, Kareem, aka Galaxy S Nine Plus. Is that your <laughs> is that your surname, Kareem? Is that your is that your technical name? I changed it since the quarantine. Oh, okay. So now we we refer to Kareem as Galaxy S Nine Plus, ladies and gents. Please. Everyone re refer and have some hearts for Kareem. He now lives at a comedy club. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. I moved in. No one's here anyway. Remember, guys, I am a stream median. I came up with this term. I coined it right here on Bronx Music Heritage Center page. Stream median. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, I dated another girl before all this happened. And by the way, I dated a girl on Zoom the other night and she took me home on the first date. What's that about? No, I'm just kidding. All right. Um, I dated another girl and she she did bring bring me home and it was on the first date. She brought me home on the first date. And I thought, wow, as a guy, you're like, wow. But then I sat on her mattress. She's like, let me go to the other room. Let me go to the other room. And I was like, okay. And I sat on her mattress. And you know, you know, um, Erica's a psychic. She would know you when you touch something. You touch something, all of a sudden you get all these flashes of all the memories. So I sat on her mattress, this girl, and I got flashes of all these memories of all the other guys she must have taken home and slept with and all the other Zoom dates she just bought home out of nowhere and all the coronavirus. And I jumped off her mattress and she came out and she goes, oh, you like my mattress? It's memory foam. It's, it's memory foam. 
So Kareem, the rent on that, uh, did you buy it outright or is there mortgage involved? I'm just curious. Me, just, you know what? Message me later because I want to move into the, to the New York Comedy Club. Uh, I would like to do that. Um, guys, I'm having such a good time. Are you guys having a good time? Please, some hearts in the chat. So I grew up in the 80s, ladies and gents, a time when you could drink water for free. Yes, the 80s, a magical time, a time where you could smoke inside an airplane and the movie theaters. You could do that, no one cared. It was the 80s, we loved it. And I am a December child, my birthday's in December. You know, I, people always ask me the same question. Hey, what are you? I'm a comedian. No, 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 no. What are you? Because they want to know what nationality. Where are you from? Where are you from? New Jersey. No, no, and they get mad. They get, no, what nationality are you? Sagittarius. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a Sagittarius. And as a Sagittarius, I got the combination gifts as a child. I would get the left sneaker for my birthday and then the right for Christmas. I would get the toy and then the batteries. I, this, is, this was my childhood. Mom is actually watching in the stream. Can I have some hearts for my mom? Hi, mom. I had a great childhood, by the way, mom. Don't worry about it, okay? Halloween in the 80s, ladies and gentlemen. Halloween in the 80s was was magical time also. Do you remember wearing the plastic garbage bag for Halloween? And then you put on the plastic jagged edge mask of Fred Flintstone that would cut into your skin, but you would wear it all night because you wanted Snickers. And the band, remember the white band that went around your head and it was, it cut into your cranium somehow. It was a tiny, elastic white band it would cut into your cranium and you would have an indentation in your head the next day you would eat the candy with the indentation and you would have it am i getting through to anyone out there oh i should have talked to erica to see how this was going to turn out beforehand guys i'm thinking of a number in my head right now Okay, I'm thinking of the number. What is it? What is it? The number is 203,465.7. Anybody got that in the chat? Please, please put that in the chat. I know, I know we're together. We're together. Just in case you missed it the first time. Guys, this is so intimate. I love this. Okay, I'm, go I'm gonna wrap it up soon. But I wanna end with a family story. Which family story should I end with? This is so awesome doing comedy, sitting down and looking at my material right in front of me. This is so awesome. Guys, I'm gonna put this away. We have to find what we have in common with each other as human beings, okay? And if you didn't forget, I'm a streamedian. We have to find what we have in common as human beings in order to survive this, in order to survive this quarantine together apart, we have to discover what we have in common as human beings. And ladies and gents, I discovered one thing all of us have in common, all of us in all of these Zoom rooms and in your houses, and it doesn't matter where you come from or what language you speak or if you're sick or not sick, we have this one thing in common, ladies and gents. We all make the same sex sounds. We all make the same sex sounds. We all make what I like to refer to as the backward sneak, the sound. Everybody makes it. And this sound is always followed by a yeah. Yeah. Some of you out there recognizes that sound. Yeah. You can be by yourself, right? Yeah. Latinos make that I'm pregnant. 
Everybody makes this sound. Everybody, yeah, so in the chat, at your, in your houses right now, please, everyone in the Zoom, please join me. Do the sex sound with me. One, two, three. Yeah. Oh, you guys are so dirty. You guys are so dirty. Here, hold on, hold on. I'm going to play that just for the chat, just for the chat. This chat is so nasty. You guys are nasty. Guys, have you ever had sex? And I'm so, I'm so, so glad this is a late night show. Have you ever guys had been staring? Has anybody ever stared at you uncomfortably during sex? They stare at you uncomfortably? Yeah. Look at me, look at me. Yeah. I'm sorry, dude. Did I make you uncomfortable? I'm sorry. I see you. I can see you through the Zoom. I'm sorry. Did I make you uncomfortable? Kareem, did I make you uncomfortable? I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. Can you, if you can give me the keys to the club, dude. I want to come visit you. Okay, guys, I'm going to end here. I'm going to wrap it up and give it back to Peaches. By the way, Peaches is doing an amazing job. Hearts in the chat for her. She's amazing. Bronx Music Heritage Center is amazing. Thank, thank them for doing this amazing, amazing. Yeah. And I'm going to end here with one thought. Okay, go ahead. Wow, lots of hearts. It's amazing. Lots of hearts. Give us hearts. I'm wearing red. My dad, he was very wise and he left me with a piece of advice. Okay. I asked my dad, I said, dad, when I was very young, I was 10. I said, dad, how do you know you're in love? How do you know you're in love, dad? And he said, he looked me straight in the eyes. He didn't even hesitate. He said, son, if you can take a poop in front of her, you're in love. If you can take a poop. If she can stand the smell, she's in love too. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Last words, famous last words. Take a bow, everybody. Give them a hand. Give yeah. I like it. Lasviclive.com. Uh, Great. Lasvic Live, a stream median. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the first comic. Kareem. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I would love to hear how we find you on social networking. Give me your socials. Yo, on um, on Facebook or Instagram, Kareem Blue. Just at Kareem Blue. All lowercase K-A-R-E-E-M-B-L-U-E. All right, hit me up, y'all. All right. Erica Magic. Can you hear me? Hello. My name is Erica Sotis, E-R-I-C-A. My last name is a palindrome, so most of you probably don't know what that is. If you ever forget how it's spelled, it's the same forwards and back. S-O-D-O-S, Erica, S-O-D-O-S. I'm on Instagram. You can follow my YouTube channel and on Facebook. I just don't know how to change it, so it's very long. It's Erica Sotis, Magical Enchantress. So thank, thank you, you so much. much. And I'll tell you this. It was fantastic to hear the history of female magicians, which I never knew. And now I know one personally, so I'm honored. Thank you so much. Thank you so right. much. Thank you. Omar, are you there? Hey, Omar. I'm here, what's going on? So let us know how we can find you online on your socials. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, anything else, Omar Olusion. That's O-L-U-S-I-O-N. Thank you very much. Great job, everybody. Now I'm gonna turn it back to Elena and the Unknown Conguero. How do we find you, Peaches? Oh, it's Peaches Rodriguez 1 on Instagram. It's Peaches Rodriguez on Facebook. And it's also Peaches Rodriguez 1 on TikTok. There you go, Elena. We wanna, we wanna thank everyone, Omar, Laz, Erica, Kareem, Peaches. Thank you so much for tonight's show. Yes, Saba. And, and everyone, right now, the unknown Conguero. The unknown Took his bag off. Also, for the unknown Conguero. <laughs>
much. Stay safe, everybody. Stay safe and check Good night. out our Facebook Buddy. programs coming up in May. All kinds of programs. Thank you so much. Have a great night.